Some of you may only know me for my wars and science, tips, and weapon breakdowns. And some of you may only know me for my airsoft-related content. But I feel like I've got to bring these two hobbies together for this one video. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys 10 reasons why you should try airsoft as a warzone player and why you should try warzone as an airsofter. You'd be surprised by how similar these two activities are. Sure, one's in real life and one's in a video game, but if we look at the way how we play it, where we play it, and who we play it with, you're gonna see that they're very, very similar. And if you haven't tried the other out, you should definitely give it a chance. Now, let's get into the 10 reasons, starting with reason number 10. Both of these activities improve your skills, although different skills. Both help you with increasing your perception and your reflexes, but the way that you act is a bit different. Both are going to help you with your perception to spot enemies far away or enemies that are hiding in cover. Both also increase your motor skills. Your hand-eye coordination, especially your hand muscles, will be tested in Warzone. Whether you need to be using a mouse and keyboard or a controller, you're going to be able to drop shot and aim down sights and react to your enemy's movements before they can beat you. In Airsoft, your hand-eye coordination is important, but you're not really throwing that many grenades, and all you're really doing is learning how to use your muscle memory to aim down your sights and get on target really quickly before your enemy can. However, in Airsoft, we get the benefit of doing a lot of exercise when we play. We do a lot of running, or at least I do. I know there's some people that like to find a nice spot, lie down, and snipe for an hour, but for the most part, you're going to be doing a lot of running or at least a good amount of walking. Especially if it's in a respawn based mode, you're going to have to walk all the way back to respawn. Reason number 9, the locations. In Airsoft, anywhere is your location. There are so many different fields you can play on. Whether you like more close quarters action, or long range forest gameplay, or even a mix of both, there's always a field for you. I've even seen some fields that are heavily inspired by Nuketown and other Call of Duty maps. So if you played on these, there's a good chance you've already gotten some of that Warzone experience. And in Warzone, sure, we don't have as many maps, but we've got two really good ones. Rebirth Island is a pretty nice recreation of Alcatraz, and now we have Caldera. Caldera is an island in the Pacific, and this map is amazing. It is huge, and there's so many locations within this map. We have volcanoes, airfields, and so much more. Wanna have a firefight in the streets, or in the middle of the jungle? If you can imagine it, it can probably happen. Reason number eight, the cost. Warzone is completely free to play, so as long as you get your hands on a console or a PC that can play it, that's all you need. Sure, there's in-game cosmetics that you can buy, but if you just want to try it out, there's literally no cost entry. Unless you don't have a console or a PC that can play it. Then in that case, yes, it would cost quite a bit of money. Now, there's a misconception that Airsoft is expensive to get into. It's not. Many fields have free days where they just let players try out the game for free. And even outside of those events, there's a lot of fields that just let you rent their equipment. For $5, you can rent a weapon, a mask, and any gear that you'll need throughout the day. If you end up having a lot of fun, you may be going through ammo a lot and end up buying a few bags of ammunition. But at the end of the day, it's a pretty low cost. You don't need any sort of fancy equipment to start. All you need is a hoodie and jeans. That is all. And if you do end up liking the game, you can buy a pair of goggles and a face mask for around $15 to $25. Then for around $100, you can buy a starter pistol, a bag of BBs, and some extra magazines, some gas, or extra batteries, depending on the one you got. But if you buy used, you can get so much more for around $100 to $150. Although, yes, this is a lot more expensive than the free entry price that Warzone is. Now, reason number 7, the team dynamics. Both games are pretty immersive, and you'd be surprised how into it your team can get. Team dynamics vary from being extremely serious to just straight up goofing off. And that's the great thing about these games. They let you do that, and you're not punished for it. As long as you're not breaking any rules or cheating, you can do pretty much whatever you want. Do you want to run as a super tactical squad and secure a win? Sure, you can do that. You can go all in, shouting commands and using hand signals. Or you can do the complete opposite. You can think of something really dumb that you want to try out. As long as your team's alright with whatever you're doing and as long as you're all having fun, it really doesn't matter. And these things go for either game. Because in the end, these are just games that we're trying to have a good time in. Now for reason number 6, the game. Both of these are just kind of a category. 
there's just so many different ways to play. In Warzone, do you like traditional battle royales? Well, that's the kind of the core game. Do you prefer a more freestyled game where you can do whatever you want? That's Plunder. There's so many limited time modes that are objective based, team deathmatch based, or just a change up on the battle royale formula. There's just so many games that there's always something for you, although not all the games are always available. Now for Airsoft, at a field, we're usually only playing one game at a time. Sure, we often play Elimination or Team Deathmatch, but often if you can come up with a game and everyone can agree with it, then there's no reason you can't play it. Capture the Flag, Demolition, King of the Hill, hell, you can even play Battle Royale. You can do it all. There's even a fan favorite game called TTT that got brought into Call of Duty Cold War as the double agent mode. So there's definitely a lot of fun to be had. But if we take a step back and look at the core mechanics and the basis of both of these things, it's one life modes. We're used to no respawns, so if you're out, you're out, and that's a very easy thing to transition between. Although in Warzone, you do get a gulag. And sometimes in Airsoft, you can get one too. Now reason number five, the pacing and the mobility. If you wanna play fast, you can play fast. If you wanna play slow, you can also play slow. But both of these games can accommodate to you. Sometimes something happens that causes you to switch up your playstyle. But this is expected in a game that has so many dynamics. As for mobility, we're both used to moving reasonably fast, especially if you're an airsofter who plays CQB. You have a lot in common with aggressive close quarters Warzone players. And Warzone players, have you ever wanted to slide cancel in real life? Well, you can. In airsofters, don't you wish you could just jump off a skyscraper and parachute down or ambush an enemy? Yeah, you can do that in Warzone. Now for reason number four, operators and kits. If you've been playing for a while, you're gonna wanna show off that you're unique. In Warzone, there's a lot to choose from. There's operators and armed forces from a bunch of different countries, private military and mercenaries, and there's even popular culture characters. Sure, there's not an infinite number of operators to choose from, but with all the skins you can buy, there's always gonna be something for someone. Now for Airsoft, whatever you can think of, you can do. Want to use the gear that your country's armed forces or police are using? You can even choose someone outside of your country. Want to make your kit completely mashed up from the best pieces of gear from around the world? You can definitely do that. Or you can choose anyone from popular culture. And you can always get gear to match. Literally, anything you can think of, you can do. Now for reason number three, your loadouts. Your loadouts are a direct representation of the way you play and your personality. Do you choose to be a laid-back sniper, an aggressive SMG player, or are you just sticking to the meta to make sure that you win? This says a lot about you. There's over 150 weapons you can use in Warzone, and there's a lot of gear and perks that you can choose from as well. Due to balancing issues though, you can't always have infinite combinations. But what you can always count on is having three perks, one tactical, one lethal, one primary weapon, and a secondary weapon. Although, the secondary weapon can also be a primary weapon. In Airsoft, if you can carry it, you can use it. Want to run a Barrett with an LMG? Want to recreate a loadout from a movie? How about running around with an SMG, a Nerf gun, and a Minecraft foam sword? Yeah, that can happen. If a weapon exists or has been in a movie, there's probably an Airsoft replica of it. And if you can't find one, well, there's always someone probably willing to 3D print it for you. While every field may not allow it, you can always add grenades and flashbangs to your kit, or you can just add dummy ones and still throw them in for the effect. In some hardcore military simulation games though, you can even use rocket launchers and grenade launchers to take out vehicles. So if you search for it, you can definitely find a situation where you can use your loadout exactly how you imagined. Now for reason number two, weapon customization. We absolutely love customizing our weapons for aesthetic or performance reasons, but either way, it's exactly the way we want to do it. One of the things we love about the Warzone Gunsmith so much is how much freedom we have with customization. We can choose up to five attachments from eight different slots on Modern Warfare and Cold War weapons, and with Vanguard weapons, we can choose 10. Sure, some of these slots can be perks, but Outside of that, we've got barrels, lasers, muzzle devices, magazines, ammunition types, there's so much more. We can completely change their looks and playstyles, although sometimes aesthetic changes come at a price to performance. 
You can't turn SMGs into long-range laser beams, and you can't turn sniper rifles into close-quarters monsters. You're free to try, but it's not always gonna work. They are still, of course, trying to balance the game, but no matter what happens, it is your weapon, and you created it, which is pretty awesome. In Airsoft, the only limit is your budget and the amount of weight you can carry. Want to turn your assault rifle into a DMR? You can do that. Tracer rounds? Easy. Slap on every single attachment you can find? Yep. Even duct tape things that you don't have rail space for. But it doesn't stop there. Because we can access our weapons gearboxes and internals, we can modify the core function of our replicas. Want to increase your rate of fire? Swap to gears. Want a higher velocity? Put a heavier spring in and a longer barrel. Want to make a burst fire? Pop in a MOSFET. If you ever wanted to, you could make an SMG match the performance of an assault rifle and nobody would know until you beam them. For an airsoft player, Warzone's customization may seem like a downgrade, but trust me, you actually want it like this. In airsoft, we are all technically on an equal playing field in terms of weapon performance. In Warzone, how do you feel if you got one shot by a pistol instead of a sniper rifle halfway across the map after spending 20 minutes looting? Warzone's balancing system isn't perfect, but you're rewarded for building your weapons well. You really have to try to stay within weapon class and type, but you can still do a lot of customization. Airsoft Tech should know this pretty well, and if you love tinkering with your replicas or love setting up attachments based on your role or objective, you're gonna do pretty well in Warzone. And trust me, it's gonna feel great when your suppressor that you put on all your weapons actually hides you from enemies. And finally, reason number one. It's just a great way to have fun with your friends. Both are a really, really great way to unwind and just have a blast in a chaotic but safe environment. In Warzone, you can do some crazy things like jumping out of a helicopter and sniping someone. In Airsoft, you can clear out a whole squad by sliding on a hill and holding the trigger down, hitting the last guy with a throwing knife. Both can provide you so many memories that you and your friends can share and brag to each other about. If you jump in as a solo into Warzone, there's a good chance that you're gonna meet someone on there that ends up vibing with you and you like each other's play styles. So you just stick together and add each other as friends. In Airsoft, veteran players usually like newer players and try to stick to them, especially because we do want this game to grow. So if you're pretty chill and just wanna have a good time, you're gonna have a very easy time finding friends in Airsoft. But that was 10 reasons why you should either play Warzone as an Airsoft player or Airsoft as a Warzone player. If you haven't tried the other route, you think you will. And if you haven't tried it in a while, you think you're gonna give it another chance. But as always, if there's any topic you want me to cover, whether it's in Warzone or Airsoft, let me know you may see it on the next Community Wednesday. But that's the video. If you enjoyed it or it's helped you in any way, let me know by leaving a like. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down in the comments section down below. And if you wanna make sure that you never miss another video, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.